Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. In this video, I'm selling like half of my cars. And if you guys have ever wanted to own a Legit Street Cars, this might just be your chance. Well, except for one of them in the back parking lot that I'm selling right now. The guys just pulled up with a truck and a trailer. So let's go sell one of my cars. Hey, hey. Doing, Alex? what's up guys? How are you? Hey, Alex. Hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? Mitchell. Mitchell, good to meet you. Nice Thanks meet for you. coming out, guys. So Mitchell and Josh are here to pick up my iRock Camaro. And what are your plans with it, guys? It's going to be my first car. Your first car? Uh -huh. Dude, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> my first car was an 88 Trans Am GTA, so this is like kind of special oh, for me. Right. You guys want to go check it out and load sure. it up? Cool. All right, Mitchell, are you ready for this? Yeah. Oh, oh that's All right. Crazy. Yeah. You're going to need new shocks first. And here you go, a 305 tune port injected V8. Huh. We got a brand new battery in there for you. Oh, this is heavy. So wait, how old are you? Uh, 14. And this is gonna be your first car? Yeah. Cool, so you got a couple of years to fix it up and build it before your license? That yeah. is awesome, dude. Cool, if it's stick. Yeah, you can make it stick. Uh -huh. If you're gonna LS swap it, you can go ahead and finish it off with a T56. This is like extremely cool. Like the car and meeting you. So you've been watching the videos for a while? Yeah, for uh, he's been watching for like almost three years. I, j I started like a year ago, like just learning about you and stuff like that. But it's super cool watching and how all your videos are just amazing. Thanks. And how it's not like high tech stuff. It's like average stuff you can do. So are you guys going to do this at your house or where, where are you doing the restoration? At our house and we have a buddy that has a huge shop and stuff oh, like nice. that. So it's going to be a little bit of both. Okay, cool. All right. I got some keys for you guys. Who do I hand these to? Hand to him. It's his first car. He's buying it with his money. So. That's it. You're buying it with your yep. money. What yeah. have you been doing to save up? Um, like working for friends and stuff like that, and like birthday monies. Really? All my birthday money. All your birthday money is going towards this car. We have a, yep. we have a friend he uh, plants trees with. Crafts them up with burlap and stuff. That is awesome. So <clears> this <throat> is going to be like your first. It's our father son. Father. Father. Okay. First one. So we'll see how it turns out. That is very cool. So we agreed on uh, uh, 1,500 bucks. And I know you don't have all of it yet, right? right? Nope. I know you're good for it, though. Yeah, we got half. And you know what? I think you'll be even better for it if I just give this right back to you with the keys. I don't want no any way. of your money. Yeah, the car is yours. What? Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. want any money for the car at all. I wish I had a dad when I was your age to do a project <laughs> yeah. with. So, you know, this Dude. this might mean a lot to you, but it means probably a little bit more to me. So no, We can't here pay you. No, I don't want any money. Put that towards the car. Seriously. Put it towards the car. Be a motor. And all I want is pictures of your you progress. Sure? I'm 100% sure. Yeah. No. 100%. This, Seriously. This is I <laughs> this, wow. uh, you know, when I was a kid, all I wanted was a father son project. So when you guys oh, yeah. emailed me, it really, you know, it really hit home. Thank you. So, yeah. Wow. Beyond, thank you. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I'm so excited for you guys. Seriously. All right, guys. Uh, just a few more things before we load this up. I have t shirts cool. for you. We got stickers. Oh, multiple. We got multiple stickers. We got a clean Indiana title and some <laughs> literature. Um, and I got a little gift for you guys. So I got you a Sonic Tools sample kit. They give you a little bit of everything so you can test out the tools. They're phenomenal. This is all I have here at Legit Three Quarters. And a $250 gift card inside of the folder from Whoa. Sonic Tools. They're hooking you up wow. so you can get started wrenching yourself on your own car. So, there you go. Oh. <laughs> you gotta make it. Yeah. Awesome tools, man. You're gonna love them. Tools in a car? Tools in a car. You get tools in a car. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, Thank guys. Much. No problem. So I'm gonna help them load up uh, here in a moment. And then uh, I'll show you guys all the other cars that I'll be selling and not giving away. I got I gotta sell all those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and one more thing, guys. Uh, Modsandmiles.com, the sponsor of this video, is sending you a $500 gift card to put towards the car. So Whoa. while you guys, while we were loading it up, if you saw me on the phone a few times, it's yeah. because I gave them a call and I was like, Mods and Miles, they are going to be modifying this car. You got to hook them up. So modsandmiles.com, 500 bucks. They're going to send you a digital so gift card. We got Mods okay, and okay. Miles and we got the screwdriver thing <laughs> and we got a free car. <laughs> yeah, you got the screwdriver thing. Yeah. And we got yeah, to meet you. Got the tools. The tools. <laughs> this is better than Disneyland. <laughs> Check it out. Oh. Modsandmiles.com. It's the best place to buy and sell enthusiast cars. All right, yeah. see you guys. Have a good one. And there she goes, my iRock Z Camaro. I'm really excited to see what these guys are gonna do with it and I'll definitely keep you guys posted. Um, but with that, let's go back to Legit Street Quarters and talk to you about, well, a car that's live right now for you guys to buy. And here it is, my Montego Blue Metallic E92 BMW. This is my dream spec 
2007 335i with the coveted six-speed manual transmission and tastefully modified and restored by yours truly. So this car is live right now on modsandmiles.com. There'll be a link down below in the description box. Check it out. And I'm gonna go over what makes this car special along with all of the other cars that I own and the ones that I will be selling, which I think is going to shock some of you guys out there. The ones I'm letting go, I might, I might really regret. But nonetheless, in this video, you guys are gonna find out about all of them, and I'm gonna tell you what I think they're worth. But first, modsandmiles.com. You guys are gonna start hearing a lot about this site from other influencers and from all over the internet because this is a new car auction website similar to the other big names, but one that focuses on modified cars, cars with higher mileage, and enthusiast cars, and it's actually owned and ran by real car guys. So check this out. You can apply to have your car listed in like three minutes, and you'll get a real response within 24 hours. I mean, the guy that reviews your submission is the guy about to land this sweet wheelie in his eight-second Turbo LS Firebird, and if your car doesn't make the cut, he'll tell you why and not leave you hanging in the air like the front end of his car. Listing a car is 100% free, so no risk at all, and they won't pressure you into doing a no reserve auction. You do what's right for you, and once approved, they get to work on creating a professional, organized, and transparent listing that helps the seller get top dollar for their car and helps the buyer make the most informed decision by including known flaws, recent services, ownership history, and if applicable, a very detailed list of modifications. They offer a free Carfax with every listing. You can set up shipping right from the site and you can get financing right from the site also. With the financing, there's no limit on the car's age, mileage, history, or modifications because they understand that not everybody's dream car is a brand new car sitting on a dealer lot with dealer financing readily available. Once listed, your car will be promoted all over the internet and it might even make it into one of my promotions like this one or other automotive content creators who are helping to spread the word. Now on a personal note, I've been working with Mods and Miles for the past few months. The co-founders reached out to me for some advice. They're big fans of the channel. And once I heard their idea, I knew I wanted to be involved. So I have actually helped build this car auction website and this car community. And you guys are gonna notice a little legit street cars flavor on the site because a lot of my input had to do with what buyers and sellers actually need to make a proper transaction. So if you've been procrastinating about selling your car, I highly encourage you check out modsandmiles.com. They make it so easy, it's free to list. And if you don't wanna take your own pictures, they'll even send a professional photographer to you at a fair and reasonable cost to make sure that your car is shown in the best of light. And to the buyers out there, that have been looking for a transparent car auction website that has everything at the click of a button, this is it. So needless to say, I will be listing all of my cars with modsandmiles.com. I'm probably gonna buy a bunch of cars off modsandmiles.com. And even if you're not in the market for any of this, it's so much fun to follow along the auctions. So check out the site, it'll all be listed down below. And with that, let me tell you about my car. All right, so I bought this car about two years ago and it had a lot of issues, well, pretty much just like all the cars I buy, uh, including the fact that it wouldn't make any boost pressure. I actually got super lucky and it was just a broken vacuum line, but then I got super unlucky in the fact that the wastegates were rattling and I had to adjust those. But I was able to show you guys how to do that for free. And then I went ahead and invested a lot of money into making this car just ultra reliable and fun. So I replaced all six of the direct fuel injectors with the latest Index 12 fuel injector iteration because they had so many issues with these. BMW had to come out with new versions all the time, but these are the good ones. We also cleaned out the intake valves, installed the updated valve cover, spark plugs, all of your fluids. And then I got into performance modifications that make the car more reliable and just better all the way around, like putting together a dual fuel pump setup this car has a larger front mount intercooler. It has catted three inch downpipes. All of the brakes have been done. The previous owner replaced the clutch and the rear main seal. And then we took it over to the body shop and had the front and rear bumper painted. 
the hood and both fenders. Just due to normal rock chips, it hasn't been in any accidents or anything like that. And now the Montego blue paint just pops. I mean, the rest of the paint on the car was in excellent condition. So we ceramic coated everything. It's got beautiful and brand new 19 inch wheels and tires. The exterior is just on point with tinted windows, the chrome delete, this color, it looks amazing. We did some dry ice blasting to detail the interior and this does have the factory black sports seats with the highly sought after brushed aluminum trim. It's in excellent condition. The car runs and drives like a totally stock car, but has 420 horsepower on tap. And overall, it's just one of the nicest 335 IBMWs around that doesn't have like 15,000 miles on it. This one has 131,000 miles. You'd think it has way less, but it's been properly maintained its entire life. And if you've been looking for one of these, it's definitely the one to get. All right, so I'm gonna tell you what I think every single one of my cars is worth and comment down below if you agree, disagree, what you think. Um, but I think this car is worth somewhere in the mid teens. I think that's a very fair price for a fully sorted 335i that you can hop in and drive cross country with ice cold AC and that has additional power, but not from being all hacked up and destroyed. These are very professional modifications that don't destroy the value of the car either because all of these mods have made this car better, not only in performance, but in reliability as well. So let me know down below what you think of that and let's move on to the next car. Next up is the oldest car in the fleet. My 1961 Rolls Royce Silver Cloud Two. Now I bought this about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now at this point, I'm not sure. And um, I like this car, but it's just not me. This was kind of an impulse buy. It was a really good deal. I paid $26,000 for this car. And I think after I'm done with it, it'll be worth about $48,000, $50,000, something like that. Uh, I still have some work to do, but I bought this in Georgia and it had been sitting for a while. It was owned by like a 90 year old lady and uh, we got it to run and drive pretty well. And I drove it all the way to the Amelia Island Concourse Show and met up with a bunch of my YouTuber friends. We had a blast. I drove this as kind of a daily driver for four days when I was out there. So we did grocery store runs. We ate in the back seat like you're supposed to do with a Rolls Royce and Grey Poupon was involved, yes. And I've had a lot of fun with it, um, but it does have to go. It's not a car I'm really super into, to be honest with you. And I'll give you a little sneak peek, but I have new leather. All of the seats are in. And there's a couple more right there. So those took six months to get back. So if you guys had been waiting on a video on the Rolls Royce, it didn't have seats in it for the better part of six months. Um, but we're getting back in on this project. I have a few mechanical items I need to sort, like getting the engine to run perfectly, fixing an exhaust leak, we gotta do the seats, and then this paint is a perfect candidate for a paint restoration, ceramic coating, touch-up type of deal. And we're gonna make this thing look like a million bucks or 50,000 bucks, I guess. All right, next up is my 2001 Turbo Trans Am WS6. I've had this car since I was 18 years old. It dynoed at 902 wheel horsepower through an automatic and a big Ford nine inch rear end. So yes, the license plates say 1K HP. And yes, it does have 1000 crank horsepower. This is true, it probably has a little bit more. Uh, I absolutely love this car. It's got about 70,000 miles on the body. I've rebuilt everything like a few times. It's had three different engines, probably three or four different turbos, uh, probably three different transmissions. It was a manual, it's an automatic now, which I'm thinking about going back uh, and a new differential and yeah, all sorts of other stuff. I've had this forever. And uh, I love this car, I love this car, but it is for sale for the low price of one easy payment of one million dollars. <laughs> so the Trans Am is not really for sale. I don't know any reason why I would ever sell this car. I mean, I don't know what it's worth in today's market, maybe 30 grand. It's a 1000 horsepower, nine second Trans Am with air conditioning and it's not all cut up and gutted like a lot of these cars were. Uh, so maybe 30, low 30s, something like that. But honestly, I'd just rather have the car than that kind of money. This thing means a lot to me. It's been around for a while. So I'm keeping the Trans Am. And yes, I will be making videos on this one day. Um, it's just one of those cars that I finished before I started my YouTube channel. And my channel's about working on cars. And there's not much left for me to do, except I might swap that guy out for a... Oops. That is definitely not how this boosted LS sounds like, but this is. <laughs> Would 
with that, we'll bounce back to a car that is going to be for sale, which is the 2011 Alpina B7. Now, most of you guys think this is my car. It's actually not. It's kind of a joint project at this point uh, with me and my friend Sam, Sam Crack on YouTube. Um, so he bought the car and then he had it shipped here. I'll leave the reveal video link down below, but basically he bought the car at a dealership auction and it was a vandalized car that had been repossessed and it sat at the auction for a couple of years. So when I got it, it barely ran, it ran horribly. We fixed it up for not a lot of money. The car was also keyed, so we were able to fix all these key scratches for the most part. They're like 85, 90% fixed. Uh, again, for not a lot of money, this was definitely a budget build. And I had the front part of the bumper, the Alpina Valence painted as well. And this car overall is in pretty good shape. We also fixed a ton of electronic gremlins on the Alpina. BMW had quoted me $15,000 to replace all of the control units in the trunk that had gotten wet from the window being bashed out. And uh, yeah, we fixed that for about $150 all in, and now practically everything works on the car. So this is another car that'll be listed on Mods and Miles. So I have one more video coming out on the Alpina where we replace the back glass and we do everything else that it needs. There are little trim parts, it needs a tire in the rear. So we're gonna mint this out in one final Alpina video, and then I'm gonna drive it for like 100 miles, and if everything is the way that I think it's going to be, and this is just a normal good running car, I think it's worth mid to low 20s, something like that. This is a clean title Alpina B7 that had an original MSRP of like $150,000. So it's a lot of car for, let's just say, $25,000. Next up is a car that may or may not be for sale by the time you guys see this video. This is not mine. You may have seen it in the background of some of my videos, um, but I was working on it a little bit. It had a current draw a bad PSE pump in the trunk. But this is my friend Frank's, and it only has 16,000 miles. So an SLK 320 with the AMG monoblock wheels from the factory, and one of the lowest mileage examples probably in the entire country. It's, it's practically brand new. Um, but unfortunately, these suffer from a current draw issue from this guy right here, the PSE pump. This works the door locks and that's drawing current. It's currently hooked up right now. I was just testing it with the amp clamp um, and that is definitely the draw. So I have a used PSE pump coming for it. So Frank is gonna sell this, but he has a potential buyer already lined up. If that falls through, it will be listed and I'll leave a link down below to the SLK as well. Next up, we have my 2005 E55 AMG wagon and this is another $1 million car. Uh, I have no plans of selling the wagon. Basically, if you see me get a custom license plate and it has LSC in it, that means I'm probably keeping the car uh, for a very long time. That doesn't mean you're gonna see other cars that are sold right away because they don't have an LSC plate. I might keep them for a couple of years like I did with the 335i. Uh, the Caprice has a normal plate on it, even though I'm, I think I'm gonna keep that forever. We'll get to that too. Um, but yeah, this thing is definitely sticking around. They only made about 190 of these and we've done so much when I got this car. This is another Amelia Island car. So I bought this and it was in New Orleans. I had it shipped to Florida because I was gonna be in Amelia Island coincidentally around that time. And again, I piled a bunch of automotive YouTubers in this one and we drove it around and it was my daily in Florida for a few days and I had a lot of fun. And as soon as it came back to Chicago, I got right to work with a few performance modifications. I ran it through some abnormal tests to see if we could make it go faster with less weight. And I removed weight by removing a bunch of body panels. And then we took those body panels, had them painted to perfection. I reinstalled everything, brought it over to Chicago Auto Pros where they did a 40 hour paint correction and ceramic coating and PPF job. It's lowered on factory CLS 55 AMG wheels. And then I decided I wanted just a little bit more power. So we installed a big Whipple supercharger. We also put some long tube headers on the car and then took it out for just a leisurely cruise, you know, just to see how this thing would, you know, putt around town a little bit. <laughs> Oh. 
Next, we have another car that I will be selling, my 2001 BMW 540 with the coveted six-speed manual transmission and an amazing interior after our restoration series. So I'll leave linked down below a two-part interior restoration series that we did on this car. It's one of the most transformative, fun videos that I've ever made on the channel. I loved it. Um, and it is looking absolutely beautiful in here. It's a two-tone light tan with darker brown. I love it. And overall, this car mechanically and interior is in excellent condition. So I made another video where we fixed like 15 things in one video and we fully sorted the car mechanically. So it runs and drives beautifully. It's got nice tires, uh, everything. Everything is good to go as far as that. For now, it is an old E39, so it'll probably break at some point again, but it's got 119,000 miles, something like that on it. And basically what's left on this car is exterior cosmetics. So we have like a little crack here in the bumper and the whole car needs to be buffed out. There's some scratches that need to be fixed. And this car has been part of my legit flip series where I take a car that I bought for $900 that didn't run well. I got it towed to my house, sight unseen, but it had a clean title and we got to work immediately fixing a transmission issue and then everything else it needed, the interior, and we've just gone down the list and really picked this car apart to make it what I believe to be like a $6,000, maybe $7,000 E39. Um, now it does still have some issues that I don't think I'm gonna fix because of the series that I'm doing on this car, it's legit flip. It's basically how can we make the most amount of money on a car so we're not restoring the car for someone else the entire purpose of that series is just to make money so on all my other cars they're passion projects they're cars of mine that i keep for a long time this is different think of wheeler dealers that's exactly what we're doing here so there is some rust on the car like right here and some at the bottom of the doors and i don't do that kind of work myself so i sublet it out and it might cost a couple grand so it just wouldn't make sense for me to do um, so I'm gonna sell it as is. That way the next owner can see all the issues. We're not gonna bring it to Mako and have all this stuff filled up with filler and painted so we can sell it for more money um, because that's dishonest. So I'm gonna sell it as is. It's gonna be mechanically sorted. The interior is gonna be done, but it will have little bumps and bruises on it. But yeah, this one has one more video left in it, just like the Alpina, and then it's getting listed on modsandmiles.com. Next up, we have my 2002 SVT Lightning in true blue metallic. If you guys have been following along, with this series, then you know that I had a bad head gasket. And so I removed the cab in order to remove the heads much easier and then replace a bunch of other stuff while I was in there. Um, so we found a clearly failed head gasket and then I found a clearly failed piston, which just means I get to build a forged engine and go for some big power. So uh, obviously the transmission is out right there. And I just got this in the mail like 10 minutes ago from Circle D we have a 2800 stall converter. So that is gonna help us put the power to the ground where there is absolutely no weight and the tires are just gonna spin. Um, here are the old rods and pistons. And then we have headers right here. So we're doing a full exhaust. This thing is gonna sound absolutely ridiculous, especially because I bought a used ported blower with a smaller pulley. So everything's been ported out. We're gonna run a proper intake. I bought, well, I got this one kind of for free because I bought the blower. He's like, it's cracked. And there's a lot of other parts that come with this, but I'm gonna fix it all up, paint it true blue metallic. And we're gonna do some cams as well. So we're gonna replace the factory cams. This thing is gonna chop, it's gonna whine. It's gonna do all the good stuff you'd expect from a true blue metallic SVT Lightning. So I paid $19,000 for this truck. I think if I just fixed it and didn't modify it at all, it'd probably be worth like 25,000 in this market. But after I'm done with it, I think it'll be worth like upper 20s, something like that. Um, we're gonna be putting quite a few good parts in this thing, upgrading the fuel system, building a stronger motor. So again, this will be a modified SVT Lightning, but I don't think it's gonna decrease the value. It's gonna be a reliable 500 wheel-ish horsepower Lightning that looks factory, looks clean, and is just better in every single way. So there's no reason for this to be worth less than it would be worth if it was totally stock, especially because it's not like a 5,000 mile garage queen that says 85,000 miles. It's out of that super collectability realm and it's prime for modifications and just enjoying it. Next up, we have my 2012 Caprice PPV. Now this is a car that I went into 2022 thinking I was going to sell 
because I kind of finished this entire project in 2021. And that's typically how it goes. I finish a car and then I can't keep them all, but I, I just couldn't do it. It is too cool of a car. I absolutely love the Caprice. So when I bought it, it was totally stock. It was from Florida with like 80 something thousand miles on it. I dropped the engine and transmission out the bottom, disassembled the entire engine. We got rid of the active fuel management system and I installed a gigantic camshaft a billet circle detour converter, really nice long tube headers. I had the heads upgraded to LS3 spec and I put it all back together and this thing just works. We had it tuned on the dyno. The car sounds absolutely insane. And then I added a nitrous kit to it as well. And then I finished up the interior just so it's a little bit more complete. So this has working air conditioning and everything like that. Um, and I installed a center console. People always give me crap because it sounds like I say center console which I guess I do, console. <laughs> and uh, we installed a proper rear seat as well. And I think I'm gonna finish it off um, with the door panels, but we're gonna keep the exterior looking all police. People have said I need to get rid of that. I'm not getting rid of that. I think it looks really cool. But the one thing I might do to this car is just put my LSC logos on the door because they're black and white. It's a circle. It almost kind of looks like a badge sort of. So we're gonna put legit street cars on the doors, the logo, and then we're gonna do legit pursuit vehicle, I think on like a diagonal or something like that um, back here. It used to say emergency. I don't know if you can see that right now, but that's about it. And then I was thinking that maybe we should put a supercharger on this, but we'll see. Um, the Caprice as it sits right now, I think is worth about at least $16,000, something like that. It was funny. I was going to let it go for like 11 at the beginning of the year. And then I started to look at the market on these and it has just gone nuts. And I know all cars have gone crazy, but I think this is definitely not a bubble car. I think people are realizing how cool and how rare these are, and they've just gone up naturally in value because of that. So I wouldn't sell this for any less than 16. There just wouldn't be any reason, but similar to the cars that I'm keeping, I just rather have it. It sounds so, so good. It drives beautifully. It's fast. It's cool. It's unique. It's got it all. And for the price of like a 12 year old Camry or just some mundane car, you can have this. <laughs> Next up is my 1996 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX with a five-speed manual transmission. So I haven't done too much to this car on the channel yet, but I have big plans. So I bought this from a guy in Chicago who had driven it back from Nevada three days before I bought it. So it's been out in the desert since brand new. It's got 238,000 miles and I paid $8,000 for this car. It's hard to tell because it's white, but basically it has no more clear coat left. So it needs a complete paint job. And it is crazy to me how much these cars are worth. But the big deal with this car is that it has absolutely no rust anywhere. The undercarriage has absolutely nothing. We pulled back the panels in the trunk. Everything's original. It's never been wrecked. And it was just properly maintained as a normal car. Uh, this is one of the only GSXs in existence that still has a factory air box with a paper air filter. So it does have one weird thing. It's got an aftermarket exhaust manifold with a factory turbo. So maybe it was modified at some point. I don't know. Regardless, it's super clean. It's unmolested. It hasn't been wrecked. And I'm going big with this one. We are going to strip it down. We're going to have the entire car painted. I'm taking the engine out. We're going to paint the engine compartment. We're going to do big brakes. We're going to do wheels. We're going to lower it, but it's going to be a very clean, professional adult GSX build because this is one of my favorite Japanese cars of all time. And yes, I know that this car was put together in normal Illinois for the American car market, but I still consider it to be a Japanese car. It's a Mitsubishi. Okay, I'll give you, it's 75% Japanese, 25% American. It's, it's more Japanese than, than Peter. Oh, hello, please. <laughs> so definitely no plans of selling this car. We haven't even begun the project and I pretty much only sell cars when I'm done with them, not saying that they're gonna be 100% done to everybody else's tastes, but when I'm done with the car, that's when I sell them and we haven't even started. Um, so I think this car right now is worth about what I paid for it, $8,000. I thought people were gonna destroy me in the comments that I overpaid like crazy because that's what I thought. But some guys were like, oh man, that's worth like 12, $14,000 where I live, you know, in the United States still. 
And uh, no one, no one at all was shocked that I paid eight grand for this thing. Okay, my 2016 P100D Tesla was by far the most expensive vehicle I've ever bought at $63,000. I never imagined in a million years I'd ever spend $63,000 on a car, especially a daily driver. So this is my official legit streetcars daily driver. And yes, I have temp plates on it, even though I bought this a long time ago, there was an issue with mileage and the previous owner and the title. It was nothing malicious or wrong with the car. It was literally a clerical error that took months to clear up and the DMVs were all shut down because of COVID, it was a nightmare. But anyway, uh, we have custom plates on the way. That's why I have a temp tag because the custom plates in Illinois sometimes take three months to get in. So it's gonna say LSC EV, you know, electric vehicle EV. Anyway, I thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, I don't have any plans on selling this guy. Uh, this is my dream spec P100D, the color. It's got full self-driving. So this is now a $12,000 option from Tesla and this one already has it. Um, it's got it all, heated and cooled seats, the gigantic sunroof, it was $150,000 new. It was worth a lot more than I paid for it the day I bought it. I think it was worth about 73, about 10 grand more than I paid for it. Um, but it had a couple of little issues, like the brakes in the front were heavily warped. So I put new pads and rotors in the front. We had a door handle that didn't work. And then it just had a bunch of little cosmetic issues. But again, my friends at Chicago Auto Pros and I went to town. We did a full paint correction, PPF everywhere. Carbon fiber spoiler, we added carbon fiber in areas like this and like this just to set it aside. And I just think the Tesla's perfect. So I'm not gonna sell it. I do think this car is worth like upper 70s at this point. And this is kind of an easy one. This is one you can simply just look up because it's so new and modern and sold so often. Uh, P100D with about 50,000 miles with full self-driving and in this condition with good tires and everything is worth uh, like mid to upper 70s. And here she is, my wife's supercharged 2015 Escalade ESV Platinum. And if you guys have not seen the last video on this truck, I'll leave a link down below. My wife drag raced for her very first time in this truck. I mean, she's never drag raced anything. Her first time was the Escalade and it kicked butt. This thing is a total dig monster. And she raced everybody from a modified Ford Focus RS all the way to a track hawk. It was a ton of fun. And at the end, she wanted to modify the Escalade even more to make it faster. We uh, we got some future mods to do. Yes, sir. All right, all right, you heard it here first. So I'm sure you guys have seen the videos where Peter and I installed a Magnuson supercharger in two days and then surprised her with it. We secretly installed it. She had no idea. Um, but not many people saw the drag race video, which was kind of like the finale of it all. And this thing performed flawlessly. Well, except for some transmission issues, which we're gonna have to address at some point because the transmission just shifts way too slow. Other than that, the Escalade's been great and we've put about 5,000 miles on it since the supercharger with no issues. So 86,000 miles, clean title, rust-free from Florida with all of its service records. I paid $46,000 for this just a few months ago. Uh, I would say it's probably worth about the same now, plus the addition of the supercharger, which is about an $8,000 kit. Uh, I would say low to mid 50s is what this is worth, roughly. I don't know, let me know in the comment section. This is kind of a weird one because you don't see too many supercharged Escalade ESVs. Um, but regardless, we don't have any real plans on selling this outside of the fact that premium fuel is over $7 a gallon in Chicago. We absolutely love our Escalade. If you guys have been wondering where my CL65 AMG is, well, it's back here at the original legit street quarters, my home garage. And if you guys remember, I bought this car from Hoovy. This was a Car Trek season two car that had a lot of issues. And I did most of the work right here. And after it was done, I moved to legit street quarters. And this is so pathetic, but I haven't even had time to clean up the garage. I mean, it's been months. These are all parts from the CL. So very long story short, me and Max drove this CL65 AMG in the dead of winter time from Wichita, Kansas, all the way to Chicago with at least five known issues, some of them very major. So it had an oil leak and I had to drop the entire engine, disassemble everything, remove the cylinder heads, all for this, a $1 O-ring. This was an absolute horrid design by Mercedes on an otherwise very well-rounded twin turbo V12. But I replaced the O-ring, put it all back together, and then started a lot of drama with the ABC suspension. So I couldn't get the ABC suspension to work after replacing its leaky pump. 
and it turns out that one of the accumulator balls blew up, sent rubber throughout the entire system, and I had to go around and fish all this rubber out. It was a total nightmare. We also ran into some other issues with the CL's engine where a factory fuel injector got stuck open and hydro locked it, which never happens on these. It was a complete disaster, but nonetheless, here it is at my home garage and it doesn't need anything but a final wide open throttle tune. So this is here because I don't have any other work to do to it. So there's no need for it to be at legit street quarters. It doesn't leak anything. It doesn't burn anything. The engine runs perfectly. Everything works on the car. And I actually take this thing out cruising quite often. It's a beautiful car. I love the pillarless design. I got the sunroof open. The interior is in excellent condition. It's a beautiful place to be. But basically this has an older Mercedes computer that no one tunes, or I should say custom tunes. There are mail order tunes just for a stock car, but we have bigger turbos, bigger injectors, ported cylinder heads. And I found a guy, he's outside of the United States. He sent me a tune and we're having an issue where when I go wide open throttle, it goes into a load limit situation and limp home mode. So we're kind of working on that. But other than that, it's totally done. And as soon as I get that tune in there, we're hitting the dyno to see what this V12 puts out. I'm not selling this car just yet. I do want to enjoy it after I get it tuned for quite some time, um, but I don't think this is a forever car. I will eventually sell the CL65, and I think currently it's worth in the low 20s. So I paid Hoovy $10,000. I put about 500 million hours of labor into it and probably like $10,000 worth of parts into it. But yeah, there is a cap on these. It does have 135,000 miles, although it's a rust-free California car with a clean title. Uh, so I think low 20s would be fair for a car like this. All right, so those are all of the cars that I either have currently listed for sale that will be listed for sale shortly and well, all of my other cars, which are technically also for sale just for $1 million a piece because I really don't want to sell them. So earlier in the video, I told you guys I'd let you know why I'm selling all of these cars. And it's really for two reasons. The first one's easy. It's because I bought a physically large vehicle that will be here at Legit Street Quarters soon. And I just need to make physical room to work on this thing. You guys are gonna love it. It's gonna be a ton of fun, but it's gonna be kind of a lengthy project as well. So I just need the room. The second reason is because I wanna make room for, don't kill me here, but a more exotic car. And don't worry, I've read all the comments throughout the years where people have mentioned they don't ever want the channel to change. They don't wanna see me follow the path like many other YouTubers do, where you buy a Ferrari and a Lamborghini and then the whole channel kind of turns into a supercar channel. Don't worry, I've never been into Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I never had a poster on my wall when I was a kid. I think the most expensive car I ever had a poster of was like a C4 or C5 Corvette. Uh, so these are truly the cars that I like, this kind of price range, because I just grew up as a regular Chicago blue collar type of guy. So that part of the channel will never ever change but I do want to make an addition to the channel of something a little bit more risky. So something that could cost a lot more money because it's more in the exotic realm um, that needs to be repaired. So it's gotta be obviously something interesting that's broken like all my other cars, but I think it'll be really fun to dig into something that just physically costs a lot and the risk and reward is there to back it up. So if I can fix this exotic car for not a lot of money, I could potentially make a lot of money flipping it as well. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I've always wanted to drive around an exotic. I, I think I've been in one Ferrari in my entire life, Sam's. Another kind of prerequisite for this car is it can't just be a common exotic. I want it to be something really cool, something that us car enthusiast guys might recognize, but it could go by unnoticed by the general public. So something that comes to mind is like a Mercedes Black Series. So obviously those look really cool, but some of them are a little bit more subtle and mundane. So I want something that you and I know is truly special, is truly rare, um, and that I'll be fixing up and bringing back to its former glory, um, just in legit street cars fashion. So if you guys have any cars like this in your area for sale or anything that you see out there, uh, definitely shoot me an email at legitstreetcars at gmail.com even if it's not a crazy exotic, you know what I'm interested in on the channel. So send me listings, send me whatever you got uh, of basically broken or interesting cars with a story. Uh, so with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this entire video. I hope you guys win the 335i BMW. It's an amazing car. Um, and stay tuned for all of the other ones listed on modsandmiles.com. If you enjoyed this video, 
give it a big thumbs up, share the video with all of your friends and family, subscribe if for some crazy reason you haven't already, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.